I am coming at you bare face today because I am doing a video, a full face video of products that I think are garbage. And I did, would not ever think that I would normally be doing a video like this, but I am doing a collab with Jen from Jennifer Joyce Beauty's channel. If you've never heard of Jen's channel, I think that you're really going to enjoy it. Jennifer does a lot of skincare. She is an esthetician, but she's also a fitness instructor. So she throws some of that in there about how she stays fit, which I really appreciate. She has she, this most gorgeous red hair. I just love it and her voice is so calming you guys she's, she's a, a beautiful woman and i think that you're really going to enjoy her not only does she talk about skincare and fitness but she also does tutorials she does kind of things all across the gamut so please go over and give jen some love give her video a thumbs up and if you enjoy her content make sure you subscribe now if you're coming over to my channel from jen's i want to say welcome to you thank you so much for coming over and visiting, and I hope that you do enjoy the content here. I focus mainly on what is affordable, but very, very good quality um, as far as makeup goes and skincare. And I just really focus more towards the mature woman because the skin, everything changes so much as you mature. So we're going to get into why I think these things are garbage, why I don't feel like you need them in your life. And I'm going to do a full face for you. And this is a really good time for me to explain to you guys too about coloring. We had that coloring video not very long ago. And this is gonna help you see coloring on my face and what happens when you put the wrong color foundations on or the wrong color of eyeshadows and blushes and all that kind of good stuff. So I hope that you do enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and let's get into it right now okay I'm zooming you guys in a whole bunch there so you can see what I'm doing I have a little viewfinder right there that's about this big so if I have a tendency to glance over there you'll know why I did not plan this video to be this way but it is full of makeup revolution products I used to be the biggest makeup revolution fan and now I have just gotten to where so many of their products are so disappointing that I just pass on them. So we're gonna start with the primer. My skincare is already on. We're gonna start with the primer. This is the Blur Stick from Revolution Pro. Um, I guess maybe they were trying to dupe Milk Makeup, but can you guys see that I can't even get any on there? It's just so, look how it's pushing my skin around. And I'm putting hardly any pressure on there. It is kind of a silicone product. I can feel that, but it's so tough or it's so stiff that it just really doesn't hardly put any product down. So I just wanted to show you that. I didn't really put any product on because it doesn't come off of there. That is so stiff. And then again, this is another one from Revolution Pro. This is the Pore Perfecting Primer. Again, they were trying to dupe um, the Poreless Putty Primer from e.l.f., but this is so stiff and so, I don't know, it's just like, it's almost like that other one. It's a little bit easier to work with, but as far as it being really, you know, filling in your pores and stuff, I'm sure if you got enough on there, but I like to have things that are thin around on my big pores because, you know, you put on too many products and you're gonna most definitely end up with cake face. And especially as you're older, it just, ages you and i even have a makeup sponge that i didn't like this is from beauty creations this sponge is very stiff even though it is damp i've dampened it all the way but it's extremely stiff and it just kind of doesn't blur out the products it just kind of moves it around so i'm not crazy about that and then i have the maybelline dream radiant liquid this didn't work for me two reasons one is the color is so orange and so off and, and after a very short amount of time it gets extremely patchy and it is very orange on my skin. And the other thing is it oxidized so quickly on me too. So that was a, a lot of things that just didn't work real well for me. And it doesn't have a tendency to cover as well as I would like, even though, you know, it's supposed to say that it's a radiant foundation. I don't find that. It I just honestly feels like one of those foundations that doesn't cover, doesn't give you good coverage, but it ends up being very patchy very quickly. And of course, this sponge isn't helping matters as well. This just did not cover hardly at all. I have all this right here where all of my age spots are right here and it didn't cover hardly at all. So it's gonna get real patchy on me and it's gonna look really bad very, very shortly. The next thing I'm gonna use is from NYX and this is their little color corrector, I believe it is. And um, it's like a peach color and 
this is okay, but what happens is because it's not a thin enough product to, co to color correct my under eyes, it's going to really make everything settle quickly. And that's really hard because when you have really crepey, really a lot of wrinkles under your eyes, when, especially if you squint or you smile and you get those deep, deep wrinkles like I do, then you have a problem because everything settles in there. And I'm gonna show you two that didn't work for me. The Maybelline Super Stay Full Coverage Concealer. And this one, it just doesn't cover that well and it breaks apart, settles into lines. Um, same thing on the other one. This one covers a little bit better than the next one I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna leave that for just a second while I go off to do the other one with the Ulta Full Coverage Concealer. This is supposed to be waterproof. And it does a fairly good job, but what happens is in such a short amount of time, I'm gonna have so much breakthrough and that is really a difficult thing. For brows, this I got from Folklore and I like a lot of Folklore's Folklore, I can't even say that, product, but this one particularly was just very, very stiff. I like that it has a spoolie on one end. As I'm working with it, I feel like I'm actually tugging on my eyes and that is a big no-no if you have um, eyes that are mature. The other thing is the color is so orange and I did not find a color in it that really wasn't very orange. Again, if you haven't been with me, you're not gonna know that I shake and I have a palsy in my hands. So you have to forgive me because everything looks shaky and I look nervous. I'm not nervous, it's just a disability. So please forgive me if you're new to the channel and you're wondering what the crap's going on. So I am just going to do these brows and it takes so much. I mean, I'm using so much pressure to push in on here. Here's the other thing about it. Even though I can get it on and I can get it to build up, what's gonna happen is if I take anything, um, if I just kind of you know, pull across it with my finger, or I get an itch in there or anything, it's gonna come out really fast. But yeah, it's, it's just a very orangey color for me and it was just really hard to do that because the product was so, so stiff. Okay, so for a palette from Makeup Revolution, this is the Chilled Palette with Cannabis Sativa. When I got this, the packaging is so cool. It's a metal packaging and look at the colors. Don't they look just intriguing and beautiful? And I was so excited about it. I was like, these I'm gonna really have fun with. But what you're gonna see in just a second is there's no pigmentation in here whatsoever. So I'm gonna start with this color right here, which should be a really good transition color for me because I'm so fair. I'm gonna pick that color up and tap off my brush. And I'm going to try and start in here and kind of just pushing motions, stippling motions. Okay, you guys, can you see how there's hardly any pigmentation right there? I mean, there's hardly anything whatsoever. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to move into a darker one. And I'll do this one right here because it's the next darkest one. The darkest one in the palette is over here. So I'm gonna do the next darkest one and I'm gonna take it on that fluffy brush, which I don't normally like to do. So I'm gonna stay closer down into the crease. Now that's putting on a lot better, but even still, you guys, look at, there's hardly any pigment here. I'm gonna go into what looks like this bright green right here. And that is it right there. Looks pretty good on my finger, but I'm gonna put this across my lid. And as soon as I do, you're gonna see that there isn't hardly any color there, you guys. So again, I'm gonna have to build and build and build and build. I'm next going to go into this color down here, which is a white, and I'm gonna put it over top of that green to try and diffuse it and make it a bit more bright. And it had a lot of yellow in it, so. Still not very bright on the color, you guys. So I'm gonna do a deepening color with this dark chocolate right here into the outer V. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that, pick it up. Normally the amount that I just picked up would be putting so much pigment down. Okay, not too bad. I'm not really happy with it, but I don't know if you guys can see this or not. It's a little bit humid here today because it's raining, but I'm, I'm getting breakthrough already, right through here. I'm getting creasing right here and in my nose, and I'm like, Ugh, that just looks so bad. And then if you can see underneath my eyes, I don't know if you can or not. Again, I'll turn the light off here in a second, but if you can see that this is all getting really patchy and it looks, so bad. So, okay, I'm gonna just really quickly put, um, I don't have a regular eyeliner or a pencil liner that I really like. So I'm gonna put um, some of that brown underneath my eyes with a liner brush. So I'm going into that deepest brown and I just want a little bit here on the outside. 
Can you guys see how this is already breaking apart? I don't even know if you can, right around my nose. Oh, it just, when I'm gonna spend the time to put on makeup and to take that much time to blend it in and try and make it look good and it breaks apart before I can even get my other makeup on. And a lot of people will say right now, why didn't you just go ahead and powder? The reason is, is because normally I don't powder before I put my cheek products on because I find that if I do, then my cheek products don't stick as well. So yeah, I'm just doing it exactly the way I normally do. Okay, with the eyes done, we're gonna move on to bronzer. This is from Koki. This is the matte bronzer. This one is in Heat Wave. And it's a huge pan of bronzer and I don't mind the texture or anything, but this bronzer is so orange. As I'm putting my brush in here, for me, it's just, powders going everywhere and that drives me crazy. Now I'm going to make sure that I kind of touch my brush in my hand to get off any excess so that I'm not getting too much on there. But I used a fan brush today because I want to use this as my contour because I don't really have a contour color that I can use. But this is gonna teach you that if you use a wrong contour color, that's just orange. And so instead of it being any sort of carving out technique, it's gonna look more like a blush. And when I put it up here in my hairline, it's going to, again, just look like orange. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put my thing in my mirror in front of you guys. So it's just gonna look very orange and it's just not a great look. And normally I would want that to recede and to look like it was bringing my forehead forward with a contour color and now it just looks really, really bad. So I'm gonna bring it down my neck a little bit and try and match my neck to the orange I got going on and just bronze up just a little bit, cross my nose where the sun normally hits. You have a really good tutorial about face makeup if you're interested, I can throw that up in card, in a card. All right, now for blush, I'm going into this uh, palette from Beauty Creations. It's the For Floral Bloom Blush Palette. It looks really beautiful, doesn't it, you guys? It looks like one that you would really like, but this is so powdery and it kicks up so much powder that it's just really hard to work with because you get too much on too quickly. And the other thing is it has no lasting power whatsoever. So I'm just gonna go into all of them. I'm just kind of taking them all on my brush. And again, one of my tricks is going into your hand to make sure you don't get too much on there at the beginning. This brush helps you not to do that anyway. But um, yeah, so this is okay and it looks all right. But what's gonna happen is that like in an hour, I'm not gonna have any blush on. And that just drives me crazy. All right, the next thing is from Makeup Evolution again. Sorry, you guys, it's just personal preference here. This is the Rose Quartz Highlighter. And um, it looks like it would be, you know, something pretty in the pan, but on the skin, I mean, you can see it right here. Does that look like it has any shimmer whatsoever? It really doesn't. So I'm just going in with a fan brush and I'm loading that fan brush quite a bit. So you can see how much I just got on that fan brush. And then I'm gonna go across the cheeks here. And I mean, a little bit's happening. I don't know, you guys, it just doesn't, it doesn't give any sort of prettiness to the skin at all. It's just, I don't, that is just one that I don't like. Now, I don't have a finishing powder today because I just couldn't find one that I really don't like because I don't keep them. I send them on to declutter or give them to my daughter or whatever. So I'm just gonna go right into my lip product. This one is from Ofra. This is supposed to be a lip primer. Um, I'm assuming that it's for matte lipsticks, um, but it, you would think that if it's a lip primer, you could use it for regular ones. As I'm putting that on, my lips, I didn't get to put a balm on them anyway because I normally do. But as I'm putting that on, it actually makes my lips feel like they're more dry than they already were. So I'm putting it on, I can feel it drying down, I can feel it like almost, almost sucking the life out of my lips. And then from Jouer, this is one of their metallic uh, liquid lips. I am not a liquid lip fan. So if you are a liquid lip fan, you can see that it is a, a fairly nice color. It's kind of orangey, which doesn't match my coloring at all, but it is a pretty color. And the only thing about these and the way that they dry down, my lips will kind of shrivel up and get even drier than they already are. So that's a huge problem with that. And then I'm going to go in with this Buxom 
gloss and this one is let me see if i can read this this one says it's mariah i believe and the reason i love buxom glosses don't get me wrong you guys i absolutely love them but maria was one that you'll see in just a second what happens i just put green on my lips i just put iridescent light green on my lips with that and now i look like i have like 60s lips, which isn't a horrible look, but I don't necessarily go for iridescent uh, greeny pink on my lips. So that particular color was one that just didn't suit me very well. Okay, and now you guys, two products that are, oh my gosh. Okay, first of all, this is the Milani Infinite Liquid Eye twin, up to 24 hour wear liquid liner. So I'm gonna try and show you guys this. I'm kind of trying to get some of the goop off. You can't get the goop off. Hopefully you guys can see how uneven that little tip is. And that's not a brush at all. That is just a plastic piece that doesn't bend. So we're gonna just try really hard to do the best we can. I'm gonna try and, if I go too slow, my hands get too shaky. If I go too fast, I'm going all over the place. Okay, did okay, it did okay. But what this does is it's so liquidy and there's so much liquid on there that it just got into my eyelashes. And then we're going in with this mascara immediately so that doesn't set in the eyelashes and make them look clumpy. This is from Essence. This is the Get Big Lashes 3 Triple Black Mascara. Let me tell you why I despise this one. Look at that brush. Look how big that brush is. You would have to have huge eyes in order to be able to make this brush work. I'm not gonna be able to catch anything on the inside and I'm not gonna be able to get the little hairs on the outside. And the other thing is, is I cannot get in there really close to be able to, you know, pull the lashes from the base of the lashes or the lash line to make them look longer. So even though when I get this on, it's gonna make my lashes look okay long, I can't come out here and work with it on the edges of my lashes because it's gonna to start to clump together because of that brush. And then the product is just gonna look clumpy and cakey and it's gonna to mush together. And I'm getting little balls of it on the tips of my eyelashes. I don't think you guys can see that. But yeah, this is not my favorite at all. Um, okay, now I'm gonna work with that on the other eye. And I'm having a hard time getting past this one part. I'm gonna have to roll, oh look. See how goopy that was? Can you guys see what just happened? It went right down there in the bottom because there was so much on the brush and I can't control the brush. So I'm trying to go across here. And yeah, that kind of made a mess. So I'm not very happy with that. All right, and then again on how big the brush is and picking up the product. I'm not gonna put a lot of this on. That brush is so big. See, I just touched my nose. That brush is so big that it is just impossible to work with. I don't know, have any of you guys had this experience with this particular brush from Essence? Do you like this mascara? Does it work for you really good? And it's just kind of clumping my lashes together. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm not doing any more, that is it. I don't have a spray that I didn't like that I brought in here. I'm not gonna be doing any of that. But you get the gist. There are just sometimes products that you just you don't meld with, you just don't like. And that's really what's happened here in all of these products. I'm obviously not going to link these. I'm not gonna list this. This is just kind of for fun. It almost makes your makeup not really even fun to do. I'm about to turn off my light. And you guys can see, first of all, look how shiny. Look how shiny it is. I would have to absolutely set it down. I'm gonna turn the light back on just a tiny bit. Now look, can you guys see how bad it is as far as it didn't cover right through here. Look at how bad it is these um, concealers did on not covering. They cover out here, but the really dark parts, it's not covering at all. And then this <laughs> eyeshadow is so patchy. I don't normally do a job like that. It's so patchy. And then the lipstick's actually looking good with the light off, but it is, it, when the light is on, you can definitely see that cast of green. And then I'm looking very, very orange. That is the finished look. I hope that you guys enjoyed this very weird video for me. It was very weird. Working with products that I don't like really made me not like to do makeup today. And that is not like me. <laughs>
So I hope that you did enjoy the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. If you're new to the channel, I would really appreciate that. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with me today. Don't forget to go over and check out Jen's channel. I will have all her information linked below so that you can go ahead and check her out. And I think you're gonna really like her. So you guys have a great day. Stay safe, stay sanitized. I love you guys all so very much. Hang in there and I'll see you in my next video. Bye you guys.